two, one. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Daku. Yeah. But you can call me Cage. So today we're going to do a movie review on the movie Oppenheimer. Now, when I saw this movie, I was in the theater. Shortly after, I had to go to the bathroom. I had to take a dump. But I held it. I held it for almost three hours just to watch this movie. That's how good it was. And that should tell you everything you need to know about Oppenheimer, but I will go into greater detail. So, the movie Oppenheimer is about, you guessed it, Oppenheimer, the uh, father of the atomic bomb. It goes into his life before making the bomb, during it, and after. Now, one of the things I really loved about this movie, first off, is that there was no CGI whatsoever. It was all practical effects, which when you see just from the opening scene alone, so there's the opening scene, Oppenheimer's looking at this rain, and then a few scenes after when he's laying in bed, he can't go to sleep. And it's like you're seeing space and like these atoms and things just popping up on screen. That's all practical. Christopher Nolan filmed that all practical. There's that, none of that CGI. That alone is amazing. And I am keeping this review kind of spoiler free just in case there are people that have not seen this movie yet. But while we're on the subject of Killian Murphy, he did the most amazing job portraying this man. Now, the last time, and I'm ashamed to say I have not seen a lot of the movies Killian Murphy was in. And actually, until recently, I've been calling him Cillian Murphy this whole time until a few people corrected me, so I apologize. But Killian Murphy does an amazing job, and the last time I saw him was in Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, in The Dark Knight Rises when he was playing Scarecrow. That's what I mainly remember him for. And when I saw him in this, it was like he was a completely different person. Like, some actors they play the same people in every role like will smith and dwayne johnson you know they're still that same person you know like in every film killian murphy from batman begins to even the dark knight rises and how he acts and talks in this movie is com is completely different it's wild he's such an amazing actor and it's a shame it's taken this long for him to get a role like this where he can get like some more recognition you know because i haven't seen that many movies where he's the star of the movie but he definitely should be he's an amazing actor robert downey jr oh my god we don't even need to talk about him we know he's an amazing actor and he absolutely killed it in this role you had matt damon in there you had emily blunt there were so many actors in here because I, I i knew that it's killian murphy obviously and then emily, emily blunt and Matt Damon, you know, I knew that I saw them in the trailer. I knew they were in there. But as I'm watching the movie, there are more and more actors coming on screen. And I'm just like, how did I not hear about this casting? Like, people I'm just recognizing from movies and TV shows are just popping up in these roles. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, we got the, we have a packed cast. It was pleasantly surprising. Everyone did an amazing job in their respective roles. Now, mainly what this movie about is basically Oppenheimer. It's his, like I said, his life before he made the bomb, while he was still studying, during it, and then everything after. And the way that Christopher Nolan, he doesn't waste a scene. So every scene means something. There's nothing to be wasted. And I can say confidently after watching it that every scene needed to be in there. Every scene had something that contributed either to his character or the story overall. There's not a scene I would take away from this movie. It definitely needed to be three hours long. 
I also love how Christopher Nolan doesn't glorify the bomb. Like, obviously, there is this moment of triumphantness when it actually happens because the people there, they're not really thinking about the lives that are going to be cost at, at the expense of this thing. They're just like, oh, we have a weapon to end the war. You know, they're they're cheering, they're jumping up and down. You know, there's this, there's this triumphant music, but the scene doesn't last that long. And almost immediately, it goes into the horror of it when Oppenheimer has to go and talk to people. And you can tell what he's saying to them isn't really what he's thinking. You know, he's saying, telling them what they basically want to hear. But meanwhile, fighting inside his head mentally about what he knows is going to happen when that bomb drops on people. And it was a very tense scene. Matter of fact, the leading up to the bomb, it was a very intense scene. Like, the countdown starts and there's this music playing and it's just... I'm, like, sitting there, like, stress-eating my popcorn because it, you know, it's just... Is that intense, you know? I'm just shaking my leg, eating my popcorn, and, you know, I'm tense in that theater, you know? Everyone was quiet, you know, but you can feel the suspense in the, in the auditorium as, as the music just gets more tense and the sounds start happening and the countdown is going at 10 and 9 and 8. It was very, very suspenseful stuff. Now, shortly after that, the rest of the third act is basically about what Oppenheimer, basically his life and the ramifications of everything after. The way he's treated, you know, the stress he's going through knowing that he created this thing. And it was so heartbreaking in scenes and then other scenes were just so messed up. And it's just like, this guy went through all kinds of things, trying to serve his country and, you know, do something just for them to turn around and just take it away and betray him you know and it was it's almost like how can people actually do this but sad to say that it's not fiction you know people actually are like that and it was just disgusting to watch how people treated this man after everything he's done and it's clear he regrets it either in like live interviews and even the way Killian Murphy portrays it in the movie which I say his face expressions really sell it like Killian Murphy does an amazing job like he knows how to move his face and his eyes to just be very expressive and show the deep regret of what's going through this man's mind you know someone that was more interested in like the science and the chemistry. Him not knowing that his experiment would be turned into a weapon to drop on other human beings. And to be, you know, hailed as, you know, the father of that, the creator of that, you know, people chanting your name for killing others. You know, it's no good's gonna come of the psyche from something like that. And that shows in Killian Murphy's betrayal of that. And it's so powerful. On a side note, there is a scene that I really love, and because I feel like it parallels Breaking Bad in a way. So Heisenberg from Breaking Bad, obviously Walter White, he has his name from the opposing scientist of Oppenheimer, Heisenberg. And when Oppenheimer is wearing like this military uniform, his friend tells him to take it off. He's a scientist, you know, he doesn't, you don't need to be wearing that. And there's a scene where Oppenheimer walks over to his hat and he puts it on and it's very breaking badish like when Walter White would go and grab his hat and put it on when he was being Heisenberg who is the uh, named after the actual guy in this movie it was it was just a cool scene that I like you know I don't think it was an easter egg or like a, a call to but I think it was just like a coincidence but I really did love that scene also we definitely have to talk about the score like oh the music in this movie was astounding I think my favorite one is, it pops up in a few scenes, but um, first scene was when Oppenheimer's uh, girlfriend at the time, I believe there's a scene where she's crying and she's like laying on his shoulder and he's trying to comfort her. And then this, there's this music in the background. I'm like, wow, that whoever made that score just deserves a raise. That was a really good score. I don't know if this is a different one or if it's the same score, but it also plays again when Oppenheimer meets uh, Matt Damon's uh, general character for the first time. They're sitting there talking, you know, going back and forth. 
and then the same theme I believe uh, swells up and you know starts playing again that is my favorite score from the entire movie like it induces deep thought and things beyond your comprehension like that like when it was playing I just like found myself you know thinking of you know like space and the universe the music kind of warns that type of like thinking from you it's just wonderful like, I can't explain it more than that when you see the movie you just have to listen to it like remember those two things I talked about and then just go into that and then when you hear that music just like let your mind wonder like it's amazing now like i said this movie was three hours long and i sat there and held my crap until the credits started rolling this is an amazing movie i definitely recommend you watch it it's one of christopher nolan's best works and it definitely warrants a second viewing i will definitely go back and be watching this again because it deserves it so that was my review of oppenheimer if you've seen the movie, please comment your thoughts below. Try to remain spoiler free mostly just in case someone that hasn't seen the movie wants to come and look at this review. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.